Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family, Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here. How are you? I hope you had a great weekend. And I know last time I talked to you, we had so much snow that I could hardly even get out and it's gone. It's like here and gone. And I hope it stays away. I like it just for a little period of time. <laughs> so it is so nice to see you. And guess what we're working on today? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. What is the next, uh, at least one of my favorite holidays coming up? Uh, can you guess? Can you guess? Well, we have got Cindy Hogan in the house today and way to see this very cool project. Custom fills. I, I think it's more than that, though. I was trying to think of a really cool word for it. Maybe, Cindy, you can help me out. <laughs> Custom fills uh, over and above. I was thinking of a different right. word, but I thought maybe I shouldn't say it. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what we should call it. It um, Just a different way of playing with your fills. It, you know, you can do so much in my design center and in your P design, either one that you want to use that it custom decorative fills just gives you a whole new experience. A huge, you got it, Angie, you got it. We're working on something for Valentine's Day, but what she's showing you today could actually be for other holidays. I was just telling her that I have one for the fall, but I can't give it away. Let's let Cindy share it with you, but we are live today. Ask your questions. We're live on Brothers Sewing YouTube and Facebook pages, and we're happy to see you. Cindy, so, it's great to see you. I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Everybody's excited to see you as well, especially when you come up with really cool embroidery projects like you always do. Well, we try. We try. I mean, this one, I will have to say, I was having a creator's block. I don't know if y'all ever go through that or not, but sometimes it's like, what am I going to do now? What have we not done? And I don't know. I mean, we've we've done a lot of stuff, especially with as many of us get on and do lives and as, how many years we've done these lives now. That is, <laughs> what, what's new? What can I do that's different? Oh, well, you knocked it out of the park this time. You want to give them a little sneak peek at it? Sure. Do you want to flop the picture up or do you want me to show it on the table? Uh, let's see. I have the picture here. Let me see if I can flop it up. Everybody's. Oh got a full house today everybody's so excited to to see you again and they love embroidery pills let me see if i can bring that up here nope let's pop up yours <laughs> okay. let me flip over to the different camera hold on all Good right morning Miss jane look at how cute this is oh my gosh i love it i love it i love it so you you can't see the whole thing from my view though, unfortunately. There's just it's too long. But I'll bring up I'll, the picture while I will find the picture while you're showing that. Look at how long that is. Yeah. This is what we're gonna play with today. And guys, if you don't want to do a table runner, you could do coasters, you could do just a little centerpiece. You can play with it however you want to. I'm, but we're gonna do, right. I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I use with doing with using the decorative fills. Now on mine, I have this is a built-in fill that's a double. This is stippling that's built in. So I tried to do a mix of custom and um, those that are built in. This is a custom, as is the, that's its custom all the way, and then this is a built-in. This one's a custom, a custom, a custom, a built-in, a built-in, and then these are customs. So I, I try to give you a mix, and it you know, if you don't have custom fills, that's fine. However, I do have a, this one right here is free for you on my website until the 14th. Oh, so a if you don't have any, you can download that one. And there's a motif that goes along with it. So do we want to get started playing? I love it, Cindy. I'll let you take it away. And if you can see all the comments, they're loving it. And I'm with you, Julie. I did not realize these were attached either. I thought they were maybe she just did a bunch of hearts and placed them on top of each other. So this, look at that. It's going to be so much fun. All right. Okay, guys. So we are going to go to our machine. And the first one we're going to talk about is this one. Because I want you to, I want to show you how to do the Trapunto look before I do custom fills. And then we'll, because I can get that one sewing. Um, 
actually I take that back. Let's do custom fills first and then we'll get this one sewing and then I'll show you the other little tricks. Okay. We're not going to do it on as grand of a scale as I've done to, as I've as large as I've done here. Just kind of giving you that little heads up, but let's, oops, I'm standing in front of my camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go into my design center and I'll, I'll show you how I created the Turpunto one first, and then we'll move on from there. So one of the things that I do when I'm designing is I will bring up, oops, I will bring up the hoop size that I'm planning on using so that I know what I'm staying within. And if you want to do that, it's just a visual. The machine has no clue as to what you're doing. Touch your settings and then come choose what frame size you want to use. So let's say we're designing for an eight by eight inch hoop. That gives me that boundary and I know I need to stay within that area. That way this big space doesn't just is not all consuming. It lets me know what I'm working with. So everything that I did was built in besides the fills. If I touch the stamp shapes button and I touch the heart and touch OK, I've got my heart in there. So what I did was I touched size and then I touched the keypad. I love my little keypad now. That was one of the best updates that they gave us. And I put in 7.8 and I set it. So I made it dimensional, 7.8 both sides. And there we go. So that's my first heart. And so we're creating a Trapunto hoop, um, Trapunto look. So we want to echo those inwards. So what I did was I went to the duplicate key and then I went to size and I put it in the center. And then I came up here and once again, I chose my size. So I went about two inches down, which would be 5.8, right? Oops, not 55. Ah, clear. There we go. So, 5.8 by 5.8. Let's see if I can get that right. There we go. And then I touched OK. I needed four hearts. So once again, I just hit duplicate, size, center. I came up here and I went down to 3.8. And then I did it one more time. Size, center. And that would be 1.8. So my biggest one I used in the 10 by 10 inch frame. This one, I, I'm just doing it on a smaller scale for you today. So then I came in and I chose my fill. So touch your region fill button. I chose stippling. Pick a color, any color. It does not matter. You get to choose when you get at your machine. But make sure you choose the fill bucket and then touch where you want it to stipple. All right, we've got that ready. So now that is how hard this is. Totally just extremely hard, right? We touch next. And the first thing I want to do is I want to link my decorative fills. And I came in here and I made the run pitch small. All uh, right. I think I went to 0 0.048 inches, which is about 1.2 millimeters. And then I made my stippling tiny. So it would be micro stippling. And the last thing I did on the stippling was this right here. I changed it to zero so it would be right up against the edge. That way there's no distance between it and the outline. And then I went to my outlines. You could leave them as a zigzag if you want, but I really wanted a triple stitch instead. So I'm going to go fast forward and I'm going to link all of my outlines at one time. I could have changed them at the beginning, but this way, oh, yep, that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to touch red and triple stitch and then touch OK. So my basic heart is done. 
And I'm going to put that in my machine's memory so I have the exact one I need. And we'll say set. To create the turpunto, I could have just used, and in one of them, I did just use one layer of batting. But it didn't give me the effect I wanted. It didn't pop up quite as much as, as if I, when I put two layers of batting in. Well, but I didn't want all that batting to be in the outside of the area when I cut it out. So I only wanted one layer of batting to be showing when I cut it out. So what I did was I touched add. I went back to my design center and I pulled that heart out of the pocket. And then I went and I chose no so paint bucket and tapped the interior lines and then fill area no so and tapped the interior spots and then I changed the color for the last one. So I came up here, I put it back on a I want a running stitch this time and I want it black. That's good. Paint bucket, tap that outline. So now that gives me just an outline of the outside heart. I'm not going to save that one. We'll just say, okay. So now I've got both of my hearts in there. They're both centered in the same spot, but they're going to sew in the wrong order. The luminaire has a solution for that. You simply touch edit move and change that sewing order. So now it's going to stitch that one heart first. And after it stitches that, I'll trim it away. I'll, I'll lay my batting down on top of my project. And then after that stitches, I'll trim it away. And then it will put the other fabric on top of it. And I usually back up and hit that stitch one more time so that it actually tacks it my fabric down to it. And then I'll stitch the rest of it. We'll put this in the memory and come back and stitch that one in a minute. Everybody with me so far? That is so cute, Cindy. I'm, I get the pleasure of reading all the comments and they're absolutely loving this. <laughs> they're loving it. Okay, so now let's play with custom fills. The first thing that you need to do is to download them and extract them if you have them onto a USB stick. I do have some on my site. There are other designers out there as well. I'm going to put it in my upper USB hole. There we go. And we're going to go into my design center. And once again, I simply picked a heart. You could pick any shape. So you could do these as flowers. You can do them as hearts. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to grab this heart right here and touch OK. And make it whatever size you want it to be. So let's say we want this one to be a six inch heart. So now it's six by six. We'll say okay. And we're going to come into our fill stitches and choose your decorative fills and say select. So all of your built ins are down through here. But you now have a custom tab. If you have the if you have a Luminaire 3 or an XP that's been upgraded to a 3, you have a custom tab. And what happens is 12 will go in this little pocket. And once you get past 12, it will ask you which one you would like to get rid of. Okay. And then you tell it which one you want to remove. And then you pick the one that you want to go in. So I'll, add, let me add some. So here's my custom tab. I'm going to touch the out of the pocket. Easy for me to say today. And let's see here. Let me pick one out of the spring collection. And we'll say, here's my spring collection decorative fills. And there's, one with hearts. I've got some with carrots. I've got just bees. Let's just pick something to put it in here so you can understand how this actually works. And we'll say, okay. So there you see it's added it in. Let's add a few more in so I can show you what happens when you fill your pocket up. And it doesn't recognize names, so it doesn't matter if it's already in there or not. It just is seeing it as a fill. So even if you've put one in there, if you add it in again, so like I've got two of those right there, it doesn't recognize names. It just knows I've put a fill in there. So keep that in mind. I 
I've got to get to 12 here. I guess I should have come in here and added a few more so we didn't have to add so many. Let's do mittens. So now I've got my 12 in. What happens the next time I try to add one in? So it tells me my storage is full. I need to choose a custom pattern to replace it with a new one. I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and I pick which one I want to remove. So there you go. And now the deal is anything that had that fill in it that I try to bring back in that I've saved to my machine, it would just replace it with randomness. It That fill would no longer be there. I would need to go back in and pick it. OK. So I'm going to pick the one that's free on my website, which is this one, and we'll touch OK. Pick a color, any color, it doesn't matter. So I'll go with red and touch OK, and I'll touch my paint bucket to fill it in. Now, I didn't want an outline outline for this one. So I'm going to say no so for my outline, touch my paint bucket, and turn that outline off. I want the outline of the actual decorative fill to turn on instead. So I'll show you what I mean. When I touch next, I, I have, you'll notice that right now it's going to trim at the end of every edge. That's because the outline for the actual fill is off. So if I turn that on, now everything's connected. You won't have tie offs and trims at the end of every area. But what if I want that heart to be down here? Can y'all see that? Let me zoom in. So what if I want those hearts right there to be right there? I can make that happen. What you do is you come down here to this little button right here. This is your offset button. And you're going to change your position offset. And I have no idea how much I need to go. We're just going to touch it until we get it there. We're close. So see how that's moved down? That's how you can get a complete repeat at the top. And there, I'm good with that. That looks good, Cindy. So now you're, you're done with it. Unless you decide you wanted to change the size of it, you can come in and choose your size. You can go up in size. Now that's going to change that offset because I've made it a bigger heart. You can go up to 200% and down to 50% on these. And I actually am going to go back to 100% because I liked it at that size. And we'll say, okay. So that's just your basic heart. That's how you do it. And I used a triple stitch. So you have your, your thick thread, your light thread. And I personally like the thick one on this one. And I touch set. So that's the basics of how it, we did it. So now let's do... I, I forgot to save that one in my pocket, which I should have, but I'm sure I have one somewhere saved. Let's just go home. And I'm going to show you another little trick. So my design center. I'm going to come in. Let me, let me see what I've got in my pocket. How big is that one? That's an eight inch. Okay, that'll work. So let's say I want to put love in the center of that. That's the next one I've got. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my design center to embroidery. I'm not going to change anything on it. I'm just going to set it the way it is. And then I'm going to bring in my text so that I have an idea of where it's going to land in here. Now, this is just the way I do it. Everybody has their own method of madness, but I wanted my stamp that I create to be in the space I wanted it to be here. So I touched add and I went into my text on my machine and I liked number four because it gave me that open look in the center. And I typed in love. And then I touched set. Now I could have done other things here. 
I rotated it. And then I moved it where I thought I wanted it to be. But I think it's too big. How about you? So I went into size and you can choose large, medium or small or in between. And I wanted an in between size. But I think I've got it spaced out too far. So let's go back into our text editing and go to our spacing and shrink that space between the letters down. That's that key right here. And let's touch OK. So now I'm ready to create my stamp. I'm, I'm kind of happy where that is. Anybody think it needs to move anyplace else? Nope. No, nobody's talking over there. It looks really good. I'm going to delete There's my part. And then I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to create a stamp around it. And notice how everything's connected. You can change the distance if you want it a little bit further away, which is what I did. And then I'm just going to save it to the memory. And it tells me I'm going to find that stamp in my design center. Perfect. So now we, y'all know what the trick is. We're going to go back to add. And we're going to go to my design center. I'm going to pull that heart out of my pocket again. And it was this one, right? So there's my heart. And now I'm going to find my stamp, which is this one. We're going to come in here, go to the same flower, and find our stamp and touch OK. Now, we need to fill that one in with color. It doesn't matter what we do, we just need to fill it in with color so that when I turn that color off, I have a blank space. You want me to do that again? Yeah, do it one more time. I see a few people saying, I'm gonna have to rewind, but do it one more time. Okay. So. I've got that stamp in there and it's hard to see it. Let's go zoom in a little bit, but it's hard to see it, but there's a faint outline. And you, the first thing you have to do is fill it in with color. So I'll do it with purple so you can see. You want to make sure you have the paint bucket and you fill it in with color. And what that's going to do is it's going to take everything out behind it away. So then when I come back in, play nice with me here, and I turn off my color, it leaves me that blank space. So then you can touch next. Make sure that your outline is on and then just touch set. Now you have your heart, your love, and the, the hole has been created for it. Any questions on that one? That is super cute, Cindy. Uh, there are a few questions after you finish that. I'll bring you back up for just a few other questions. And when I was done with this, when I once I've got it designed, I ch touched single color so that I didn't have to change my thread. The whole thing stitches as one unit. Okay. So that's that one. Yes, you can answer your question. I'll answer the question. <laughs> There's just a few. Uh, let's go back just one sec. Uh, Doris wants to know, I'll bring, actually, I'm going to switch this around. If you see, if you save your custom fill with the design to the machine memory, will it work when you retrieve it? It will if that, if that custom fill is still in the machine. If it's one you've deleted, it will not. Okay. So let me see if I have anything that where I've deleted one. It's possible that there might that one might be deleted. No. Nope. Yes. Okay. So that I had I had um, deleted that fill, so it replaced it with whatever was in the pocket spot of that one. So it doesn't remember if it's out of that. It has to still be in your pocket. So remember how I showed you you could delete one when you got into when you got to number twelve. If it's no longer in this pocket it's going to de default to the last one you used. 
Perfect. Amanda wants to know, hey, your decorative fills, Cindy, I know uh, because you're offering a free one and I put a link here for you guys to find that. Uh, the link is on Facebook and YouTube for you to click on. I'll put it again. But Amanda wants to know, can your decorative fills be used in PE Design 10? No, 10 does not recognize decorative fills, only 11. All right, Amanda. Good question there, too, by the way. Very good question. That was a very and for good those of you that don't know, Cindy is the, the guru of PE Design um, and so if you need any help, you can watch her every Tuesday where she's giving a ton of tips. I have to throw that in because uh, you really are. <laughs> All right. So the one that uh, the one heart that's kind of cool that I did with two with built ins. It's another one of these. And instead of stippling, I went in and picked. Um, I believe it was either this one or this one any me mine mo I think it's that one and then I I paint bucketed both of those and let's make sure my outline is turned off and then turn on the outline for the fills themselves and I, sh oh, I needed to link that. And then I shrunk those fills. I made these as small as they could go. And then I rotated them. And we're going to save this one to the memory. Okay, so I'm going to touch memory machine. And we'll set that one. All right, so now go back in and add. We're going to add that same heart. And this time we're going to change the direction of that fill. So I don't have to do anything there. I just need to change my angle here. We'll go in an opposing direction. And we'll set that one. So that, oops. I guess not th that was not a good one. Let me change let me change that to a different direction. <laughs> 225 is the same as 45, so that didn't work too well. I want it going this way. There we go. So now, oh, I didn't link my fills, but you get the idea. It crisscrosses itself, so that will tamp it down more. I needed to link it for that one to be, and I did not link that one for that one to be the same. But then when you go over here, you can do single color again and it'll all stitch out as one item. So that one was this guy right here. Oh, that's cool, Cindy. So can y'all tell what that is? So, I mean, it just bu it bumps that down. And I did the same thing with that one as I did with this one. I put a running stitch down before it so that I could add that extra layer. So let's go stitch that one and then I'll show you how to trim. And then when that one gets done stitching, the first one that we did gets done stitching, we will, I'll show you how I put them together. Okay, before you start stitching, there are a few questions. Thank you, Brother Sos, for uh, bringing these up for me because I was like, wait, I've missed a couple. So you got a couple quick questions for you. Hold on tight here. Um, make sure I'm getting the right ones. Which ones I didn't answer. Okay, so Esther wants to know how many hearts are used on your table runner? I could count them, but how many did you use? How many do I have on my table runner? Huh? Yeah. Anybody I, mean, wanna... I have three big ones. 
three big ones. I have four medium ones. So I have three 10 inchers, four eight inchers, eight uh, six inchers. All right. Did you all get that? <laughs> and you can make the table runner as big as you want. She'll show you how this works. Uh, Marie wants to know if this can be done on the dream machine. You could do it on the dream machine for sure. You just can't do the custom decorative fills on the dream machine. So you could use the regular decorative fills that are in there. The stippling is in the dream machine as well. You just can't use custom decorative fills. Exactly. That's why I did it with multiple things. Well, and that's what's so great because when you have my design center, there's so much you can do. And there's one more question for you. Uh, Linda wants to know if the hearts have raw edges. Yes, they do. I'll show you. I'll show you how I finished them here in just a minute. Okay, right. so I have, I've got my backing here hooped, and a piece of stabilizer hooped in the hoop, and I've floated a piece of batting on top. All right, are there other questions before I go on? No, someone's going to ask you again. What did you just say? I have a piece of backing hooped, a piece of batting hooped. Those are hooped together in the hoop. And then I floated another piece of batting on top. Perfect. Y'all got that? Okay. <laughs> just make it sure because I know someone's going to ask again. So That's going to give covered. me that Trapunto look. Oh, this so is going to be fun. Let me come here. And we'll go into my design center. Did I save that one to the embroidery? Let's see. I think I may have. Yep, there we go. So there's my stippled heart with the Trapunto. And the first step, I wanted to stop after it. That's why it's a different color than everything else. So we're going to go ahead and touch embroidery. And for those of you that do not like to have knots on the back of yours, let me just address this now before we go any further. If you touch your trim key, you can turn off in color trim and jump stitch trim and it will not trim. I don't care. Okay. So I want mine to trim. I that's, I, that's me. I just don't care, but some people want that don't want theirs to trim. So that's how I would tell you to do that. Now, for that first step, it's still going to tie off and you would have that stitch in the back. So plus minus one stitch. And hey, touch Linda. Okay. She did say that. She has backing and stabilizer in the hoop and then she has an extra piece of batting on top. Yeah, I've got, got batting. I don't have any stabilizer. I Batting is my stabilizer, as is the piece of fabric in the back. So the back side here. Let me show you what I've done. I'll I'll go up to my table. <laughs> Thanks. There's like a whole bunch of people are like, wait, 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 I'm, I'm missing it. Thanks, Cindy. Okay. So there's my back fabric. It's hooped with a piece of batting. So no stabilizer, no stabilizer. No stabilizers in here. The batting is thick enough and along with that fabric that it doesn't need it. It would just be one more layer of something I'd have to cut away. And I, since I was doing raw edges, I didn't want that. And so then you want to know if you're going to have to uh, raise the foot for that. Um, sometimes I do. Okay. Usually my foot, if I'm using batting, I raise it a little bit. Especially if I'm doing a candle wicking stitch, I for sure raise it. And I have matching bobbin thread in the back. So it's going to match my top. Now I'm in the hoop and we're ready to touch. All right. So we forded that one stitch. If you do not want your tie off in the back, press your needle down button and bring it back up and then pull. Now you have two pieces of thread at the top. And you can simply hold that till it gets going. And I will tell you on mine for this, I slow down. So let's, I'm going to change my speed down to about 400 stitches a minute just for this first thing in case I need to move my, to check my batting to make sure it's okay. 
Now let's stitch it. Hey, Cindy, while you're doing that, if you turn, um, MJ wants to know, if you turn off the trim, will it come unsewn? Um, it will still tie for the most part um, because the machine is set to do that. Perfect. It's not, something, it's not something I generally do. It could come out. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. You've turned off your trim and your tie. So it could come out, but generally it adds a tie off anyway. It's still going to take those three stitches at the beginning. So you can see, I'm just kind of making sure that my batting doesn't get rumpled up here. That's why I slowed it down. It will, it has a tendency to gather more if you're Speedy Gonzalez on this step. <laughs> That's, I think that's where uh, my issues usually come in. Speedy Gonzalez, multitasking Speedy Gonzalez. Get her done. <laughs> yep, get her done. I, and you know me, I, I'm usually full bore. If, that, if they wouldn't put that on my machine, if I wasn't supposed to use it. But for this step, I do like to slow it down. For this step and the next one. Now, this was a triple, a, a, a double stitch. And I really only need one. So... For this part, I'm going to back up a stitch to take it back to where that was. I'm going to trim it. And then I'm going to do the second run of that with my fabric down on top of it. Yeah, I could go backwards. I mean, I could just back up and do the whole thing again. But I honestly don't need that extra run of stitches. So now, you're going to take your scissors. And you're going to trim right up to that edge. <laughs> I'm with you, Marilyn. Marilyn says, is anyone watching all this with their mouth open? Cindy's taught us so much in just a few minutes. Yeah. I love my machines and what they can do. So, and I think you, you just, we get too intimidated to play sometimes. And I am personally a touch every button kind of girl to see what it does. <laughs> but I always know how to put it back at the defaults. <laughs> hey, so while you're uh, doing that, Paula wants to know, could you just explain a little bit more what is achieved turning off the jump and tie offs? What's the purpose of it? Okay, so let's look here. If you see, you can tell I did not turn mine off. You have if it if your trim if it trims in between, you're gonna have the knots and you're gonna have the threads that you need to come back in and trim up a little bit. Some people don't like that look. Honestly, I don't care. It's the bottom of my project. The tie-offs are there for a reason to keep your embroidery in. We're not using a quilting machine, we're using an embroidery machine, and there's a reason those are there. But some people don't like that look, so they prefer to turn that off. I get that question at least once a week. <laughs> well, it's a good one, though. So, I mean, it's just a matter of the clean back. And, you know, your front is very clean and your back is not as clean. But it's going to be on a table. And if your guests are staring at the back of your project, they've got a problem. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Okay, Cindy, you know me well. You know I like my big scissors. Cindy, <laughs> Joe says, uh, Angela, this is the time for small scissors. <laughs> yes, it is a time for small scissors. And it's I'm time Joe. for curved small scissors. <laughs> the, the double curved embroidery sensor, scissors are the best thing since sliced bread. All right, then you're just going to lay your fabric over the top. And yes, I have ample sufficiency of this. I could have cut it down and not wasted as much fabric. So I'll probably move it down a little bit here. Just make sure you're covering your heart and you're going to give yourself enough room to trim. Okay. So we're going to let this one stitch, but that's basically the concept. That's how you make it trapunto. Do you all need to see that stitch? Oh, why not, Cindy? Well, okay. We don't have to. <laughs> uh, it, it's a 25 minute stitch. Oh, no, wait a minute. Let me see if I change my speed back up here. Let me oh. look. 
Maybe just you could start it. Let's see here. If I do 800 stitches a minute. Okay, 13 minutes. We're good. So right. let, let me slow this back down to finish this part. Because I don't want my fabric to bu buckle any more than I wanted the other. All right. So let's. This time I'm not going to hold it up. I showed you how to do that. We're not going to worry about it because I don't care. <laughs> I just want it to stack this down. That, <laughs> but I mean, I understand some people are like that. I, there are certain things I'm more particular about, but to tie off on the back of my project, I just it's not going to worry me. It's more trouble than it's worth to try not to do it. That's true. So by the way, I see a few questions regarding other companies, other companies' machines, other companies' products. This is a brother show. So if you have specific questions on Cindy's fills, you can email her after. Um, but otherwise, this is a brother show, and that's why I didn't bring those up. All right. And <laughs> Barbara says, always put it back to what after pushing all those buttons? Put it back to the default. Yes, put it back to the default. And if you don't know what your default is, I'll show you how you find out. <laughs> and Julie, I love all those question marks, so I don't miss it. Hey, Jules. Um, oh, I hope you don't mind. I call you Jules. That's what I call my sister. Um, is that felt or what type of fabric are you using for that? It's batting. Oh, batting. It's batting and regular fabric. Okay, cool. It's just quilters cotton. All right. So anytime you want to know what your default is, it is highlighted by the black. So the, a thousand stitches per minute is the default stitch. You can tell I've got my foot raised a bit because I am on a higher loft material and I don't want it to push. Um, this is my def That's your default. Thanks, Cindy. That's a good, that's a helpful, especially for people that are, have never, don't want to change any settings because they're afraid. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and put single color so it doesn't stop on us. And let's go ahead and let it stitch. And while it's stitching, I'll show you some other little tick, the way I trimmed these up. And it's at a thousand stitches per minute. So it should only take about 11 minutes. Okay, hang on. I got to grab a sip. <laughs> grab some tea because everybody is loving this. And by the way, I saw a lot of you asking, how can you save this? How can you watch it again? And yes, the replay is priceless because you can hit pause, go, pause, go. You can actually do that during the live show too. But if you're on YouTube, that's the easiest way. Go to Brother So's YouTube channel. You can share it. You can save it. You can put it in your watch later file, any of those. And be sure to subscribe to Brother So's YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, the easiest way is to share it to your own profile. Then just go back to your page and watch anytime. All right, back to you, Cindy. All right, I'm changing my sound over to the TV. Talk to me and let me know that I can hear you over there. I can hear you great. Okay, I needed to hear you. I couldn't, I can't hear you when the machine is running and I'm over <laughs> here next to it. All right, so pinking shears. My challenge was, okay, I've got a point that I've got to meet. How in the heck am I going to make that work? Well, I figured it out, gang. So the first thing I did was I took a little off of this, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Actually, I am. I'm going to take bigger scissors. Yes, there's a time for big scissors, Angela. <laughs> and this is that time. I want to give myself a little breathing room here. Hey, Cindy. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you do the uh, custom fills on the 10 needle? PR um no you have to use that the only one that has custom fills is the luminaire gang the luminaire and P design 11. all right so my banking shears find you a spot that you think you want to go with and just take it a little at a time here One side, we're going to go from the front. And then flip it over. That one is so cute with those hearts. 
I think this is from my summer collection. You've got a few fans on here, Cindy, that said that they have all of your collections. I think it was Linda that said that at the beginning. Linda said she loves your collections and has all of them. Sweet. Uh, Julianne wants to know, great question, Julianne. Will your free design that you're giving everyone will work on her still air? Um, the free that I'm giving is the um, decorative fill. Now, what I can do that I have not done is I could do, I can make you a heart with the decorative fill. Okay. And put it up there because the luminaire is the only one that will actually recognize the custom dec decorative fill. If I send it to you, if I put it in a PES file, anybody can use it. Perfect. So, perfect. Yeah, that's what Linda, I can do. are you asking what brand are her pinking shears? They're not brother product. So you can message Cindy or message me. We both have a couple of our favorites. Yeah, I may message you to see if I like yours better, but mine works pretty well. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I did, guys. I did this for all of them. That um, Now, what else could I do with these? Well, so you can see that one's at a bigger percentage than this one. You could come in and make yourself a little centerpiece like this instead. Or like this. So what I ended up doing was I put them all on my big honking ironing board and I just sit and played until I found an arrangement I liked. And that's truly what I, what I did. I didn't like this one. So it got to be rejected. I didn't think that the love popped out enough on it. It was too yeah, busy right. with that fabric. So I didn't I like that one as much. I totally agree with that one. But they could become coasters. If you have too many, you could always make them coasters. You can make them trivets. You could do whatever you want to. But I also thought that this would be fun. Put two of them together like this and stitch this way. Put a little ribbon in there. And then you've got a little envelope pouch. Oh, that's cute. What a great way. You know, Cindy, that is like really, I was just thinking when you did that. What a great way to put a few little chocolates and a little card. Oh, yep. my gosh. My nieces and nephews would love that. I mean, I, I think that would be a lot of fun to do. Mm -hmm. And that would be right. super simple. Pick your, you know, so that yours that didn't make it, you could always sit there and go. They didn't make the cut. You could always turn them into an envelope. A little pouch, super. a little yeah, Amanda, a pouch for silverware. Okay, a couple more questions for you. Uh, Shirley okay. wants to know, how do you get the PES file or what file format do you have it in? Um, how do I get them into a PES file? I will have to create a heart for you <laughs> that and put that decorative fill in it in PE design and then give it to you. How do you like or that, Shirley? <laughs> So otherwise, I mean, you, you either have to create it on the machine and import it into PE Design to save it as a PES file, or I can simply create it in my software and save it and give it to you that way. So that's probably, I'll do this one and I'll do a couple of different sizes, but you will have to give me to the end of the day to get those uploaded. <laughs> you have a show this afternoon, don't you? When on earth are you going to do this? I do have a show this afternoon. Like I said, you're going to have to wait, give me till the end of the day to get those added. I did put the decorative fills up last night. So they're there, there already for them. I absolutely, all you have I to do is click on the one. picture. That big one looks great. Uh, no, the XE one, the XE, X, no, wait the a XP is the, the Luminaire is the only one that can do custom decorative fills. That's what I was you, trying to say. I couldn't get, I was like, wait, now you're messing me up with the letters. <laughs> XP that it, and it has to be a three guys. So it has to be either an XP that's been upgraded to a three or an XP three itself. Yeah, that was one of, that was one of my favorite parts of the upgrade was the custom decorative fills. It Perfect. opened up a whole new world on that machine. Because no longer was I limited to what was in there. And by the way, your P design also has way more decorative fills for you than your machine has. So that gives you more 
creating ability there. Plus you can create your own. And Angela, I do have, I did make a link to the videos where I have shown them the basics of creating um, decorative fills. I went through and found those last night. Oh, so, um, are you going to throw those on your website? You want me to drop them here? Let's drop them there. I'll copy this. All right. So we'll send those over to you as well. Uh, Kate wants to know, did I see one of your fills has bees and hearts? Let me look really close. Do I see bees and hearts? Yes, it has bees and hearts. I believe that is the one that I just worked with. Oh, Kate, you got a good eye. I saw the hearts. I didn't see the bees, but I saw the hearts. Uh, there's one with ladybugs and hearts, ones with bees with hearts. Um, oh. oh, Doris, that's a good question. Do you think the scan and cut could be used to cut all those layers? Hmm. Um, it probably could if I used my rotary auto blade. I was just thinking the rotary blade is just amazing. I don't, and it's as long as it's sharp, it should. I don't, I wouldn't use a standard blade with it though. I don't think. And um, Linda, I'm going to show you how I attached them in just a second. This is about done stitching. Once it gets done, I'll show you how I attached them. All right. So here is, I'm going to drop this PE design creating video. I'm going to drop this in for you guys. This is from Cindy. Thanks for dropping that. And, and then I got one more for you. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop it where it is. Sure. And show you how to attach it because we will run out of time if I don't. But I can show you where what it looks like up to this point. All I've got left is an outline around the, the center hearts. Do you want to take us back to your machine? I'm going to show you this. Yes. And then I'll take you back to the machine. Oh, gotcha. So okay. All that's left are the outlines for this, this, and this. And oh, I, can just look back to that. I like it without the outlines. That's cool. Yep. I, it could go certainly go without the outlines if I wanted to. That is totally up to you. So let me come back to my machine. <laughs> I agree, Joanne. I was thinking chocolate for a win. I should give make these for chocolates for a win. Okay, I'm going to switch over to sewing mode. And y'all are going to just love this next little trick, I think. <laughs> Julie said, you've got your work cut out for you today. I think Cindy should give you till tomorrow to put her heart up because you never know what happens in a day. <laughs> that That is true, I will have to say. All right, so I put my um, sewing foot on and we're going to go to our button stitches, the buttonhole stitches. And we're going to choose the button stitch. This is a stitch that you generally use with the button sewing foot. We're not going to use the button sewing foot today. We're just going to sew them together with this. Okay. So now let me get you down here. We're going to put this up underneath. And I'm going to line it up where I want it to go. There we go. And then I'm going to simply stitch it down. Oops. I do need to put my foot down. There we go. That's how she's doing it, Linda. Linda said, how are you attaching these? What a great idea, by the way. And I, I did it. I did the stitch twice so it would hold nice and tight. And I did just stitch that one upside down. Oh, well. <laughs> but that, that's what you've got on the back. And this is what you'll have on the front. Let me flip that over here. And that is all there is to it. So a button, a button sewing together stitch. It, basically, that's the stitches you use to attach a button to your clothing. And so if I want to take these out at some point and rearrange them and do something else with them, I certainly can because I have not stitched them tight as a tick. Those are cute. So, all right, let me flip back over here and we'll close it out. Any other questions that I can answer while I'm over there? Okay, let's see. I got a couple here for you. Um, Natalie, where did you go? I just saw your question. There's so many comments, I had to keep stopping. Here you go, Natalie. I'd like to see the difference between scan and cut models. I just want to make a mention because she's not showing that today. Uh, but if you go to Brother Crafts, Brother Crafts YouTube channel, click on live shows. And May Flom has shown a ton on all the different scan and cuts. Cindy has some on her. Cindy has a, you have a Facebook group too, don't you, Cindy? Yeah, I do have a one. Facebook group. The, the so go to Brother Sells, Brother Crafts, check out Cindy's show, and you can see a lot of different variations there. So. 
Um, there's a lot <laughs> going on. The biggest is the auto blade. I mean, it's a game yeah. changer. Auto blade and half cut are game changers. They were huge. My sister has an older one. We've been chatting and she wants one of mine. <laughs> I said. And, you know, the rotary auto blade is only available for the DX models. That's a good, that's a good thing to mention because the DX models really, it, they're a little more pricey. You can get them from your brother dealer, but they offer a little bit more. I mean, it depends how much you want to do on it. Lorraine, uh, if you're using rotary blade, would you then lose the pinking shears? Because you're going to cut them out and you probably wouldn't need to. Um, I, I like, I mean, it depends. I mean, I would, you would want to do something to fray check your edges. Otherwise that's why I use the pinking shears that, and it gave it that decorative element. All right. <laughs> Julie, we shouldn't care if you go over an hour and keep, do the whole thing. <laughs> Brother cares though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sharon has all of your collections. All right. Um, Sweet. Angie, will I be able to access the chat once the live show's done to click on the links? Yeah, Angie. So if you're on YouTube, you can still go back and see the live chat. You just have to click on something. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it is. But the other thing is just go to Cindy's page and she will have those links there for you as well. Um, if you're on Facebook, that chat stays there as well. And if, if you're in my Facebook group, the Education Connection, I'll pop these up in there as well. There you go. I so. thought that button was, yeah, when I was talking to Cindy this morning, she said, I did the button stitch and I was like, hmm, I don't want to act dumb, but what is that? <laughs> I was thinking the button stitch, but I'm thinking, how did you get those together with that? Oh, I get it now. <laughs> um, it's, and it was, I just kind of said, okay, I think I want these two to go together. And I go back to the table and I lay it down and say, okay, that one looks like it needs to go here. And then I go back and stitch it on. So it really wasn't a, it, it went the putting it together part was very quick and easy. Yeah. So Suzanne, uh, so we can use any brother sewing machine. Well, if you're sewing them together, yeah. But I think what she's showing you there was using the luminaire with the decorative fills. If you have an embroidery machine that has my design center, she pretty much showed you how to use a decorative fill that's already built in. So, yeah, because they have those hearts and things like that. So, and I always want to mention that because I know, Cindy, you know this, a lot of uh, Brother fans have the Dream Machine. They love that machine. That machine was a fabulous machine and they didn't want to upgrade to something different. And you don't have to because a lot of things that you show can be done on their My Design Center. Just, you know, yes. just like a car. There's always some new things that come out and new, new things that get added. But there is nothing there except for the custom stitches that they can't, you know, play around and make yep. it their own. Well, and the thing about it is, you know, a lot of people don't like software, but software does keep you in your machine for a little bit longer if you learn, if you take the time to learn it. Yeah. So, oh, hey, it thanks. It will allow you to grow. <laughs> I, uh, Cindy, last week I was debating what to do with my collar. Yeah, you can see what I ended up with. I actually ended up with four shirts. <laughs> not embroidered, but when you can't make up your mind and you got to bolt the fabric, why not just make more? <laughs> I do uh, like that shirt. The color is lovely. <laughs> thanks. Um, oh, Beverly just upgraded to the DX. Angie, the links make me go to Facebook and have to log in. They should not make you go to Facebook. So there's one for YouTube and one for Facebook. So oh, the first okay. link the was. The first link was Facebook and the second link underneath it was YouTube. So on each of those, one of them's Facebook, one of them's YouTube. So uh, Cindy, what is your Facebook group so they can go? I'm going to put your website up here as well, because uh, if you all just go to her Facebook group and join, if you're on Facebook, that she'll, she's going to drop those links in there for you as well. Uh, Brother it's Social Team, did we connection. miss any questions? Did we... Uh, of course, this is a brother show, so I see other questions rolling in about other brands. We're not going to answer those on the show. So <laughs> how do we search Facebook to get to your group? Paula wants to know. You got a link, Cindy? Do you want to drop it in? I, I, thought I dropped it in your private chat. The oh, Education okay. Connection. Okay. Right. And it's got to have the in it. And also, please agree to the terms and answer the questions. You will be automatically entered to play. There you go. Automatically entered to play. I know. Um, if you I don't, know. you'll won't. <laughs> My Facebook group, too, if you don't answer some of the questions. And we just do that because there's a lot of bots out there that are just, you know, the whole 
technology thing. Um, yeah. I think. And, and we want to know what you have so that we have an idea what to do. Everyone's saying, can I rewatch? Yes, yes. As soon as we're finished here, which, oh my gosh, one hour and 12 minutes. I can't believe you did all of that. And we got sidetracked <laughs> in an hour. That's fantastic. So if you're on YouTube, again, go to Brother So's, subscribe to their page. While you're there, subscribe to Cindy's YouTube channel and mine too. You might as well get all three. You won't miss any live shows, right? And, right. <laughs> but the key is though, when you go back there to watch these live shows, I don't, YouTube has like a whole header up there. And when you go to Brother So's, you might only see other videos that are not live. You have to click on the live button and then you'll be able to see all of them. What episode is this, 400 something? And we didn't even start counting for the first 200. So <laughs> I think we're at about 600 right now. Oh yeah, it's so great, so great. So I gotta give a big shout out to you. Uh, can you put in the show notes? Can you put in the show notes? Yeah, I just did. It's in the show notes. Gotcha, Paula. Uh, so Paula asked another question. You answered this, but go ahead and if you want to answer it again, Paula wants to know what is achieved by turning off the jumps and tie-ups. You don't have the, you have a more polished finished back. You do not have as much of a tie. You don't have a mess on the back. That's a nice way to put it. Hey, Sharon wants to know, will there be an instruction book dedicated to my design center? Well, we have a ton of videos. <laughs> I thought Rain had written one at one time, but I, I don't, don't know remember. if it's print any longer. Um, there are tons of video to videos in our, excuse me, instructions about my design center in the Luminaire playbook. I was just thinking the playbook. That's a, that's a good one to look at, Sharon. I'll do some checking to see if there's anything else, but the playbook, if you guys don't have the playbook, visit your brother dealer. That thing is priceless. A ton of projects, a ton of tutorials. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, so fees, I'm going to say so fast. What are the various PE design software available or is it just PE 11? 11 is the most current version of a full blown software that has all the bells and whistles that has the custom decorative fills. There is a light version of it. PE design plus two, I think, um, or PE design plus it's either, I don't remember if it's plus two or plus, but it's a much lighter version, does not have the custom fills, doesn't have near the stuff. So yeah. if, you want to, well, if you're wanting to create with custom fills, it's P Design 11. There you go. I was just thinking of something Angie just said, is there a playbook for the Stellaire? Hmm, I don't, well, first of all, Angie, and, and also the one who had just asked about the Luminaire and my design center. If you have the Stellaire, be sure to log to um, register your machine on Brother's site and it will give you access to my masterclass for a whole year. There's almost every lesson in there is using my design center. Same with the Luminaire. So keep that in mind too. But I don't, is there a Stellar playbook? I don't think so. Yeah, I have to check, but I don't think so. Not I mean, to my knowledge. It was so like, close to the dream. I, I, I don't think they did one for it. Yeah. So what you really want to do, though, if you want to learn more of that, I would go back and scroll through Brothers videos because I would say at least 50 percent of them was using my design center. And you go back and hit play, rewind. Am I missing any questions on there, Cindy? You see anything that I'm missing? Um, Susan, 10 can be upgraded to 11. It's the only one that can be upgraded. OK. okay. All right. I think that's. Unless I missed anyway, I forgive me if I missed anyone. There were so many comments and questions rolling. I had to keep going back. <laughs> yeah, Thanks for thank you. Us. Great show. <laughs> Cindy, you knocked it out of the park again. It's so nice to see you again. And these hearts, I'd love to know in the comments, uh, press like or press love on Brother's page to tell us, are you going to make these hearts? Well, actually, you should hit the heart button. <laughs> yes. Cindy, I think I'm going to do this. I just was thinking of the one that you pieced together, the little, the little one. Uh -huh. I'm definitely going to do this for my nieces and nephews, little mini ones. I'm going to do the mini yeah. ones. And I'm thinking of putting okay, their man. names. Yeah. Oh, you're always so inspiring. Love it. So, I, yeah, I can't wait to see what people do. And if you do some of them, please post it in the Education Connection because that is something that's a group that does a really good job of sharing what they're working on. Absolutely. Yes. And don't forget, use hashtag brothers. Those hashtag brothers can and cut. They love it. So Cindy, till next time. Oh, we'll see you this afternoon. 
For all of you that missed that, he has a live show every Tuesday at 3.30 Central. I was going to say 4.30, but that's my time. Yep. 4.30 Central. And it's and on can... Brother Software. So any software program that we have, you can ask a question. That's how I do the show. It's based off of your questions, not me preparing a whole bunch in advance. Awesome. Well, Cindy, thanks again for a great project. Brother, thanks for letting us take over your page. Till next yep. time. Happy sewing. <laughs>